So I'm working on my game and I realize I have a problem. All of my models, they look the same. My thing is, is I want to make sure that I don't rely only on texture to get visual variety. So in this video, I'm going to use a new image that I created using ChatGPT and my own drawing. And this image will be used to add a new character into my game. And the first thing I want to do is I want to bring in all the reference material into my scene. I give my, myself the leeway to um, work off concept, but I'm not going to let the concept dictate the, the art. And also, I don't, I don't really want ChatGBT's image generation to drive much of my creative instincts. I'm a 3D artist at my base um, as a developer. So sometimes I just prefer to solve problems in 3D instead of trying to solve it in 2D. The most important thing I'm prioritizing is my shapes because so much of my visual communication is on the character's silhouette. I don't have complicated animation, so the silhouette of the character needs to be very iconic. It's very stylized, so it's even more important for the shapes to stand out. And the second most important thing for me is I want to make sure the character feels balanced. I don't want the character, and this character is kind of long, so I don't want it to look like it's tipping over, or I don't want the legs feel like it's not actually supporting the character. A lot of effort goes into how the feet sit on the floor, but also later you'll see a lot of effort goes into how the hands fit on the character. Because it's not T-pose, but I also don't want it to look like the arms just forward very unnaturally. I kind of want to feel like a little bit rested and neutral idle position. It's not perfect, but it doesn't have to be. My impression, that may be wrong on this, but if I'm trying to solo develop, then just working imperfectly is perfect. My intuition tells me I don't want to get bogged down. I just want to keep moving, moving, moving. Making the game's already hard enough. I don't want to get so focused on the small details that I don't launch because I am going to launch this. I don't know how long, but the difference between me working in a game studio where they're like, oh, well, if it makes X amount of profits, uh, maybe we'll launch it. They'll do some A-B testing and see if it's market fit and then decide whether or not they want to launch it or can it. So this is for all the 3D artists watching this video. I know the topology isn't perfect, but that's the whole point. I, I want to make a game that allows me to use imperfect topology because I know how to make theoretically perfect topology for any kind of style. But if I'm trying to develop a game, I don't want to get stuck in making a perfect model for months. So I know the topology isn't perfect. So if there's there's someone out there just be like, oh, this triangle, this it's missing an edge loop. I, I know it doesn't matter. Not for my game because I'm not driving these characters uh, through a rig. My future self, if you had to choose between a swatch system for texturing versus using gradients from now on, I am always going to gradients. I really want to control the art direction of my game and gradients give me the perfect amount of flexibility to adjust things because I don't have my perfect color palette pre-chosen. I'm like, everything's using this. This means that I heavily am noticing that I'm relying on gradients to adjust my colors. Once I'm done with this character, I can just drop it into my animation holder inside of my character prefab and all the animation works as expected. One of the key features of my game and the simplicity of it also means that I don't get stuck into um, polishing the animation and all that other stuff.